In this video, I'm going to show you a design for a very simple arithmetic and logic unit. It's going to process four bits, uh, and it's only going to have one input number, and it will have one output uh, four-bit number as well. Uh, now, surprisingly, it's not going to do very much, uh, but it is going to be able to increment and decrement uh, a number. It's going to be able to find the negative of a number, and it's going to be able to invert all the bits of that number. So this whole circuit is built around what is called a half adder and a half adder basically consists of an AND gate and an exclusive OR gate. Our inputs are tied together like so and we are going to have one data input over here. This guy here will be our carry input and our data out comes from our exclusive OR and our carry out comes from our AND gate. What this circuit will do, it will basically add, allows you to add one to a number. Uh, basically if you have a high on your carry input here, it's going to add one to whatever's on the D in and your result will show up here on D out and C out. I mean, string a bunch of these together, uh, what you can do is actually add a, a much larger multi-bit number. What's interesting is that if we can invert either our input or our output or combinations of inputs and outputs, what that's going to let us do is some other operations we can actually uh, subtract one from a number instead of adding one. Uh, we can find the negative of a number and of course we can invert all of our bits. Uh, I've got a full design for full schematic diagram here which is going to show the circuit that I'll show you in just a second. And the half adder, there are basically four of them here. Uh, in this case we have an OR gate and an exclusive OR gate and that is because this whole circuit is built around uh, active low logic. So in this circuit, a zero is represented by a high and a one is represented by a low. And we're going to use an OR gate instead of the AND gate that uh, is more popular with the half adder. The reason we do that is because the uh, output current drives of our chips, uh, of our TTL chips, uh, can only really drive an LED if they are uh, outputting a low. So it makes it a little easier to see the results if uh, we have lows turning on lights indicating a 1, which is why 1 in this design is going to be represented by a logic level low. On the input of all of those, we are able to invert our inputs. We have an exclusive OR gate on the input side of our half adder, and another exclusive OR gate on the output side of our half adder, and all of those are tied together. All of the in inputs of those two exclusive ORs are tied together. That gives us basically a control signal to control whether we're inverting the uh, input or inverting the output. Um, and basically each group of four here forms one bit of the half adder and all four of them together let us process a four bit number. So the four bit number comes to these inputs over here. We control our operation with these inputs right here. That tells it whether to add one, subtract one, etc. And we also have some flag logic over here um, for AND gates, basically figure out whether or not we have a zero, so that generates our zero flag. Uh, we have an overflow flag and a carry flag, and also a positive result and a negative result flag as well. So five flags all showing up on these five LEDs over here. And if you were to use this in an actual computer system, uh, the flag uh, register here is a 74175 flip-flop and the clock pin for that is uh, going to be controlled by your um, control circuitry in your computer and three select bits here to select which flag we're looking at and of course we can look at five could look at up to eight but only five are actually implemented here and that's going to give us one flag output over in the far right hand side there that could be used to control uh, like a conditional branch in a program. Okay, so that is the schematic design um, and basically six different operations it'll do, a decrement operation, an increment operation, 
it'll find the negative of a number, it'll find the negative of a number and subtract two from it, which is not terribly useful. Uh, it has a transparent function just to pass through whatever the input is to the output, and it'll also invert, uh, invert the input. Okay, so that's the schematic circuit design. And we'll have a look at the actual circuit. This is the constructed circuit right here. And you can see it's got uh, quite a few TTL chips on there. There's actually all nine of them on there. And a little power supply section over here on the left hand side. The main bits of our half adder through the left hand side of our chips there. We've got uh, also a flag register and our flag select multiplexer there. And our flag um, LEDs are just on the uh, right hand side over here. Overflow at the top, carry uh, zero negative and positive result flags over on the right hand side. Uh, I've got a nice little cable set up here which is going to connect this whole contraption to uh, some switches that we can use for inputs and outputs. Look that up. Here are our input and output switches and we have quite a few of them. Here's our inputs and outputs. We have uh, four LEDs in red here. These are our four data outputs. One yellow LED that is our carry output or sorry, our flag output, and four input bits here. These are our data inputs, four switches to control which operation we're doing, and we have uh, four, but only three of which are actually active to select the flag, which is going to be output to our yellow LED over here, and also a uh, switch here to control the clock pin or clock uh, signal for our flag register. So the flags don't actually uh, get updated until this guy here toggles. Okay, so there's our there's our circuit. If we power this guy on, see if we can get our flags showing up and just just take note the flags are just upside down from there. So we have uh, overflow on the bottom now. Carry uh, zero, negative, and positive. Okay, so we'll set up a, a very simple and straightforward operation. We are going to try the transparent operation mode. And transparent is pretty straightforward. If one bit is of the input is on, then the corresponding bit of the output is on, just like so. So that's our transparent mode of operation. We can select an invert operation as well. So now all of our bits should be inverted as they go through the uh, ALU here. So each one I turn on is going to uh, turn off the corresponding LED on the output. Uh, next operation we might want to try is increment and we'll select uh, increment operation here. Okay this should be our increment operation so we have zero going in and we get a one coming out one going in gives us two coming out, uh, seven going in gives us eight coming out, okay? And we can actually, if we go back to six there, gives us seven coming out, we can actually look at our flag logic here. Uh, seven, of course, is a positive number, and if we give our flags register a pulse, positive flag comes, or positive uh, LED flag comes on, indicates we have a positive result. If we go from seven to eight, two things are going to happen. You'll notice that 8 is a negative, or if it's 2's complement, this is going to be actually negative 8 as an output. Uh, so that will be a negative number. And also our overflow flag comes on because we tried to go from a positive 7 to a positive 8, and in 2's complement, uh, we can't go that high with 4 bits. We'd have to go to it'll roll over to negative 8, so that's an overflow condition there. Um, if we start with... Uh, all one bits going in. That's going to roll over to give us all zeros coming out. And if we send our clock pin uh, pulse there, what we'll find is our carry bit comes on in our flags register because going from a uh, 15 to a zero in this case, 
uh, indicates we've got a, a carry out of, of one and our zero flag comes on to indicate that we actually have a zero result. And I'll just quickly show you a decrement operation. So subtracting one, subtracting one from zero gives us negative one or all 15s. Uh, let's look at, um, I don't know, number. Subtract one from six is going to give us zero one, zero one, which is of course five. And the last operation we'll look at is going to be the negate operation. And for that one, what we are going to do is uh, adjust our operation here so that we can find the negative of a number. And we'll start with zero. Of course, negative zero is still zero. And if I flip a, a bit up here, I'm putting a one in and I'm getting a negative one and two's complement out. If I put a three in, then you'll find that this will be the pattern for uh, negative three in two's complement. Okay, so there's your uh, negate operation, your increment, your decrement, and your transparent and your invert. Nice little four bit ALU. You could build a computer out of this. Of course, you'd have to have a whole lot of loops if you wanted to do anything useful like add and subtract numbers, that sort of thing, but it, it can be done and hopefully someday I'll actually get to doing it.